Welcome to the third annual Wallenberg Center for Molecular Medicine Outreach Program. Today's talk will focus on miniature organs and it was put together by the WCMM Research School students. Medical research is important for a number of reasons. It can help us figure out how the body works and how the body is affected by disease and also allows us to develop new medicines to combat disease. Computer programs can help us predict if a drug will work or which genes are involved in different diseases. But at the minute, we don't know enough about the human body to rely on the computer program. If we did, there would be no need for any other tests. Instead, when we try to find something that works on the computer, we need to try it out on living cells. This gives us an idea of what actually happens in the body. The problem with testing on cells is that we grow them in a plastic bottle which isn't very similar to real life. That is the reason why we need to use animals to test new medicines. Because the goal of medical research is to find medicine for human disease, it would be best if we could test on humans. But this is often difficult or in many cases impossible. The main reason for this is that untested drugs could have unknown side effects which could lead to serious health issues or even death. There are of course ethical issues to animal testing which is why researchers have been developing ways to limit the use of animals in research. One of the solutions they have come up with are to use organoids. But before that, I would like to go through how cells are normally cultured in 2D. Cells are cultured in a flask or a dish, and all the nutrients that the cells need to survive and function are provided in a solution called media. The cells are then placed in an incubator that maintains the temperature and humidity that is usually found in the body. Cells can be taken directly from human or animals. These are known as primary cells. Normally these cells only survive for a short time in culture. In research it can often be useful to study the cells for a longer period of time. In order to do this, researchers are able to create immortal cell lines, cells that will keep growing and multiplying indefinitely. As I mentioned above, organoids are a way to study cells in a more realistic environment. Organoids are miniature versions of organs that were originally 2D cell lines grown in the lab that have formed 3D structures. This gives a much more realistic picture of how cells behave in specific organs. By adapting the usual cell culture conditions, we can force cells to organise into spherical clusters with features of their respective organs such as the folds of the intestine wall. We can use them to study cell differentiation, how cells move and how they interact with other cells. Organoids can be made from using cells from the organ we want to study or from stem cells. Stem cells are cells that have not yet become a specific cell type. Interestingly, organoids can also get sick just like real organs. So what are the potential uses for organoids? Organoids can be used to study organ function, genetics, development and for testing of novel drugs. One example of the types of organoids being studied are brain organoids. As we know, the brain is a very complex organ and because of this, brain related diseases have been very difficult to study. Using organoids, we are able to study degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's or psychiatric disorders like bipolar. Brain organoids are made by collecting cells from a person's skin. They are then grown in a lab. The cells are reprogrammed to become brain cells and form the 3D shape of the organoid or the so-called mini brain. By taking cells from a patient, we can compare them to organoids from healthy patients. By watching how the cells grow and organize, we can learn about how a disease affects the brain. Organoids are an important technique that allows us to study degenerative disease. Degenerative disease occurs when cells, tissues or organs start to break down. In many cases, the reason behind this is not really understood. A big issue with studying these diseases is that it is difficult to get samples of tissues from live patients. Because organoids can also get sick, it makes them excellent candidates to study these diseases. Examples of disease where organs have been used include Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. While organoids have many advantages over both mice models or cells grown on a dish, there are still some downsides. Organoids are difficult to keep alive for long periods of time, 
So type-based experiments are difficult. All organs in the body contain many different cell types, which is difficult to replicate in organoids. And finally, it's difficult to apply the types of physical force that an organs encounter, such as the beating of the heart or the stretch in the lungs. For this reason, researchers came up with organs on a chip. An alternative to organoids, it gives a lot more control over the types of conditions cells can be grown in. These are small chips that can be made to represent different organs of our body such as brain, lung or stomach. This can be made to mimic the complex conditions found in our body such as multiple cell types living together or the function the organ has. A well-known example for this is a lung on a chip. A lung on a chip can be used to simulate the alveolar function of the lung. The alveoli is the part of the lung where the gas exchange happens, where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide are exchanged between the air and the blood. These are tiny sacs that will expand like a mini balloon when we breathe, and this stretching is very important for their function. By using a lung on a chip, we can simulate the conditions in the alveoli. For example, we can go multiple cell types, such as epithelial cells, that grow on the air side of the lung and endothelial cells on the blood side. We can create a continuous flow of liquid to simulate blood flow. And we can also apply the kind of stretch that occurs in our lung as they expand and contract when we breathe. We can also create a chip that mimics the barrier between blood and the brain, which is classically called the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is a complex system composed of neurons and neural supporting cells such as the astrocytes, endothelial cells and several other cell types. Each cell type in the neurovascular unit plays an essential role. The development of an organ on a chip could allow us to study detailed mechanisms of blood-brain barrier dysfunction and also to screen for drugs against blood-brain barrier leakage and also other diseases associated with this such as hypertension or diabetes. Despite the advantages, downsides to organs on a chip remain. For instance, it is difficult to create the type of organized blood vessel network and neuronal network surrounding organs. Organs in our body does not exist as separate parts each one works closely with a number of other organs in order for the body to function properly and we are unable to study this when creating just one organ type while organoids or organ on a chip are not always perfect they are still excellent model to study organ function at the molecular level and now they are constantly being improved so what does the future hold for this exciting research Organs on a chip will not only allow us to understand the basic biology of an organ, but also how different cell types communicate with each other to maintain stability of the body. To understand how different organs work together, humans on a chip are being developed by researchers. This will be done by connecting a number of organs on a chip together. One very interesting application of organoids is for personalized medicine. Because humans can be very different from one another, it will be helpful to grow organoids from a specific patient and give them specific medication on how their organoid responds to different medicine types. Organs on a chip can also be used in the same way by growing patient-specific cells on them. Thus, organoids and organs on a chip open broad avenues in different areas such as disease modeling, drug testing and also personalized medicine.